So uh, thank you guys all for coming. Anybody here seen me before? A couple, okay, new people. I know you have. Yeah, all right. You're shy. Who doesn't like to raise their hand? Um, we're going to uh, be talking today about um, theories of image organization, and I know that sounds a little dry, but the, the point of this is really to make it understandable. And I've done a lot of work recently to simplify how to explain this and how to understand all of the different elements of creating an organized collection. Um, right at the beginning, you can find me and my work at thedambook.com. Please feel free to, uh, please be my friend on, uh, on Facebook. Um, I, I post a lot of interesting, or link to a lot of interesting, or stuff that's interest, of interest to me about how our technological and photography landscape is changing. And I put a lot of it um, on my blog and, and I link a lot of it on Facebook. And if, if uh, you know, you're looking, trying to make sense of what's happening around you, I think that if you, if you look at the stuff I point to, hopefully it will help you understand that better. You can also find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Please feel free to, to friend me on LinkedIn. I also point to a lot of other material there. So if this stuff is of interest to you, you can find it there. Um, uh, I, I do publish quite a bit on my blog that isn't published anywhere else. Um, I published an analysis of what uh, the Getty um, uh, giveaway of photos to blogs and other uh, sites, what I think that's about. You can read about that kind of stuff there. Um, okay, so here we are at Event Space. I'm going to start with a few photographs just showing you what I do professionally. This is an uh, ad campaign that I've been working on for PBS. I think we've done 18 installments. I'm flying out to uh, Seattle to do another installment week after next. Uh, this is Peter Sagal, uh, who did a, a special for PBS. A lot of PBS in here. They're my favorite client. Um, Russell Brown from Adobe. Uh, I d I've done a lot of work in Africa in the last couple of years. This was part of a project I was doing for World Press Photo. Um, and I've done a lot of work for this nonprofit in in uh, South Africa, um, more PBS stuff shot here in this city. And you can see that this portfolio is essentially people, typically the real people who are affected, uh, who are part of or affected by some kind of organization. And um, that's my specialty. Um, but I also do a lot of pictures just for myself. I've been shooting this picture of my kids and nieces and nephews on a bench for 16 years. We're trying to schedule this year's version. Um, scheduling is, is the hardest part. Um, and they're, they're growing up. And uh, now that we're old people, we're very concerned about our dogs. And uh, so they get the same treatment. You're going to make it by there, OK? I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, because my photographs are so important to me and because the practice of professional photography is, is important to me, I wrote this damn book and um, it helps people make sense of the entire digital photography ecosystem is what I like to say. It's been translated into French, German, Spanish. And um, because everybody told me it was complicated, I've worked to write books that help to simplify the process. Um, and this particular one is what we're going to be, the thesis of this book, the, the sort of structure of this book is what we're going to talk about today. Um, how to understand organization in um, your photo collection. And I really think that it's, um, the structure is such that pretty much every photographer, certainly anybody who uses Lightroom should be able to understand this and it should help you help you make sense of the tools that are there that are otherwise fairly confusing. Um, and uh, I'll launch right into the, the um, basic theory of the book here. And, and what this, um, well, there's three main things that we're doing when we're organizing. We have to store our images, we have to tag them, and we have to create. And what I propose, and I'll show you today, is that you can see the tools in Lightroom and understand them as 
one of each of these three processes. And when you see this, storage at the bottom, tagging in the middle, and then creation on top, when you see the whole process that way, it makes it make sense. Almost every Lightroom user I know um, is confused about whether they should be using folders to organize, or keywords to organize, or collections to organize. You know, which, which of these things is the right thing? Well, I'm going to tell you that storage, that folders are for storage, keywords and other metadata is for tagging, and collections is how you do your creation. I'm going to show you a, a quick, well, five minutes-ish kind of um, explanation of this, and then we're going to go into Lightroom. So, but this graphic explanation, I think, really helps people understand the whole process. So storage is our bottom layer. And the tasks around storage um, and the, the tools for storage are the devices, the hard drives you use, the folders you use, how you name your stuff, how you back it up, file formats. Essentially, I like to say how you stack it up and back it up. And really, this should be as orderly a process as possible. What you're trying to do is make sure your stuff gets put away as quickly and easily as possible and preserve it and make sure you don't lose it. Like that's what storage is about at its core. <coughs> put it away, make it so you don't use it, make it so you can recover from a problem if you have a problem. And it really should be linear and, um, and simple, as simple as possible. On top of that, you have tagging. And so you could say tagging or you could say metadata. But there's all this information you can use to help you find pictures according to some characteristics. So date is an important one. And uh, location, I think, is extremely important. Now, if everything you shoot is in you know, the same room in a studio in New York City, well, then location isn't all that important to you. But if you travel <laughs> around like I do, then very frequently when I'm looking for a picture, I know I'm looking for a picture from California or Beijing or South Africa. So tagging with location, extremely helpful. If there's an event name associated, that could be the shoot name or the assignment name. It could just be a, an event. Um, very helpful, very easy to tag an entire shoot. And then ratings are decisions about how good we think the pictures are. And I'll, I'll talk about how I think you should use these in as standard away as you can across your whole collection. And it really helps you to find your pictures. And, and we're going to see this on a collection of about 78,000 pictures. We'll see how all this works. And then keywords are a tool for freeform organization of your collection according to subject matter you shoot and what you're interested in. You know, if you don't care about animals, you don't need to put animal <laughs> names in your keywords, right? But if you really love every dog you've ever met, maybe you want to put the every dog name in as a keyword. Um, so let me show you how filtering, which is the flip side of tagging, can help. So if you use the tools in Lightroom, you can use a filter to hide everything you're not interested in and only show the stuff you are interested in. You don't have to move it around in folders. You're essentially just using it to hide stuff. You could, and you know, we could look at all photos from 2012, 2013. We could say, show me everything from California and therefore hide everything else. Or show me everything from Florida and hide everything else. You could say, show me everything from this event and everything else hides. Different, you know, you'll see that I use uh, keywords for, for different shoots. And then you can use rating, and you can say, show me everything in my collection that I think is a three-star or better picture. Hide everything else. And you can see that the way I have this illustrated, that the stuff all stays there, right? We just hide the stuff we don't want. We're not moving it around. We're just using the tags to filter. Or you could say, show me everything that's a five-star. Again, we get down to just a small number of images. And now, you can also cross filters say, show me everything from this portrait shoot that it's five star, and that may get you down to one picture out of hundreds of thousands very, very easily. So using tags lets you find pictures really quickly. Now let's talk about how we can use collections, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about two different things we could do with collections broadly. One of those things is assist in our workflow. We do a shoot, want to 
sort the pictures, get them ready, and out, output for a client. Um, so that's like a workflow oriented thing. Or we might want to find a portfolio of images within our whole collection. That's a different task. Let's, let's look at this in a kind of a visual way. So using collections or collection sets, that's what the shoebox thing is, you can say, I'm going to make some collections in Lightroom. I'm going to filter, and I'm going to say everything of a certain um, rating and keyword is going to go into this collection. And then I'm going to filter it further, and these are going to be the ones that proof out to the client. And then the client's going to come back to me and say, this is the one I want as my select. And then the whole thing can be bundled up in this shoebox. So even though the photos all stay in exactly the same folder they were in, you can use the collections to put the images together in a valuable way. And of course, when you turn the filter off, you see everything again. Uh, making a portfolio, a similar kind of thing. We're going to filter here, save to five star images. Let's bring all of those together in a group. And, and then you can do this creative work to actually put it together in a way that makes sense to you. So, so while this lower layer, the storage layer, is really organized, the creative layer on top is really messy, right? We're putting our pictures together. Does that work? You know, is that sequence right? Does that picture really belong? Is this other weird picture out of nowhere belong? So, so oftentimes you need to experiment. And Lightroom provides a really great environment to do that experimentation. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. Um, and that is to use these collections. So we can have one group. We can use that to make another group. We can even use that to make another group if you want to make a book and send it off to Blurb. And again, the whole thing can be bundled up together in a, in a collection set. And um, if you understand the organizational process in Lightroom as these three steps, it makes the whole thing make a lot more sense. So let's, uh, let's go over to Lightroom and see where we see all this stuff. Everybody with me so far? OK. Hope it's not moving too slow, but we're, if we get the foundation right, everything else starts to make sense. OK. So let's, let's start by looking at where we can see the different layers. So the um, storage layer is you can see in the folders panel. So the folders panel are really folders. And you can see here I have, uh, so what we're looking at here is a stunt double of my collection. Uh, we have 75,000 pictures roughly in it. So I'll be doing this demo with a relatively large collection. Um, so we can see how, you know, how filtering and stuff works. And you can see that basically what I've got here is just a really kind of simple year, month, project structure for folders. It's not the only way to do it. It's a really good way to do it. Don't outsmart yourself when you're making your folders. Um, don't try and make them do too much. Something simple that, that uh, scales easily and expands easily. And you know, I would suggest you do months like this so that instead of January, February, March, which isn't going to line up in order, you just do them 01 through 12. Um, and, and then I would suggest that you put projects inside months. And uh, you don't worry too much about this. I'm going to show you how we can find dates really easily. So if, if you have a project that started in September and moved into October, just you know, dump it all in October. You don't, have to, you don't have to divide them up. It's really about just an easy, orderly way to stack it up and back it up. If we look over on the, uh, let's look into the stunt double photo library drive. You see this is where, that's what those folders look like. It's just really simple structure. Don't outsmart yourself. Make those things match. A um, couple other tips. You always should have a top level parent folder for any hard drive in Lightroom. And the reason is if you need to repoint this over to, say, the backup drive, because this drive just dies one day when you turn it on, you want it to be really easy for you to just say, 
go find this folder full of photos on another drive. And, every, and it's, it's like a two second operation. Whereas if there's not one single top level, level folder, you could spend a lot of time reattaching individual folders. So one, one single top level, level folder. And then I'm going to suggest, and I'm going to show you how I do an import. You know, what, is it, what does it look like for me to, to bring images in? I use a very simple naming technique where I use my name and then a six digit number for the date. So this was 2013, uh, October 19th. And then a four digit unique identifier. I don't try and put subject matter names in my in my file names. I find that's too time consuming and complicated. And, and what we're going to see is that keywords and location information and date information, you know, all this other information that we can use for tagging is so much more powerful than having to name the files, you know, dog 100 and, you know, 1174 and, you know, okay, I shoot another dog picture in the middle of a bunch of pictures of trees. Now I might have to name this dog. And what was the last dog picture? I, you know, make your naming really simple. Your names should be unique. If you have, if you have a collection full of images called DSC1234 or IMG1234, then not immediately, but on your roadmap should be, I'm going to fix those and give those unique names one day. Don't have a collection full of images where you have the same name used again and again. Okay. Um, so, really the, you know, the most important thing is that we have a nice orderly, and I would suggest, uh, year, month, project-based structure to, to name your pictures or to, to uh, put your pictures away. And then I'll just plug in the backup drive. This is truly a stunt double that doesn't have really very many pictures on it at all, but it'll be useful for illustration purposes. You know, I have my photo library and I have my photo library backup. And they should look really, really similar. They should look exactly the same, except that you should put the name backup in the title. You should write the name backup on the drive itself so you know which is the primary and which is the backup. And I suggest even the top level parent folder should be called photo library backup. Um, we'll look a little bit more at, at how to download and, and store photos. Oh, there's my card. So I will be able to do the demo. So, so tags, metadata are, are um, uh, bits of information that describe your photos. So the best way to, to kind of understand what tags can do for you here is I'm going to go into my catalog panel and I'm going to click all photos. 74,905 photos. And then I'm going to open the browse uh, filter bar here and in metadata you have the ability to browse by different metadata types. So if you have set your camera's clock correctly, you will be able to navigate down to the day. So if you say, I'm looking for pictures that I shot on you know, Halloween night, I can go to October 31st and see what I find. Or if I'm looking for pictures from Christmas Day, I can go to December 25th and find those as well. Now this information here kind of looks like it's folders, but it's not. All this is, is this is metadata that your camera wrote into the file when you shot the picture. Just got to make sure to set your camera's clock correctly. Um, my own methodology is to, is to try and always remember to set my camera to local time. So I jump around time zones a lot. Um, I try to make it local so that things that were shot Wednesday, local the day I shot them in the place I shot them look like Wednesday. Um, and, and pretty much every camera has like a time zone ad adjust on it. Uh, you can fix this in Lightroom. If you, f if you haven't done it right, you can edit the capture time and you can actually shift it by a number of minutes or a number of hours in here. And you can do that to an entire shoot. If you've forgotten to, you know, you need to do a time zone adjust, you can do that. Um, you can, you know, select a bunch of images. I did a Command A right there. And 
I can edit the capture time for all those. But, but capture time is, you know, obviously incredibly useful for a lot of people, people who think about dates. I love the fact that there's actually a day of the week there. So if you want to see, you know, if you, you weren't sure what week you shot something, but you knew it was, you know, either on a weekend or on a weekday, you can go find that. Um, so date information, really, e it's, it's just there, right? So there's no, no work you have to do. The next most valuable to me is location information. And Lightroom gives you the ability here to uh, browse the location tags that you may have in your pictures. And I just strongly suggest anybody who, who does any travel to tag their images with, at minimum, the sort of, you know, country, state, and city. But I can go, you know, I can navigate this down to all the different places in Maryland, in my town of Kensington. I can see all the pictures that were shot at my house uh, or over at the Buker's house or at the Penovich's house. And I'm just, I'm typically adding a whole set of tags when I download that you can do that in the import process. You can do it with a metadata template. Um, and it becomes incredibly valuable for finding your pictures over time. And you can see that this, this folds up in a hierarchy. So all of these different metadata browsing um, fields here, or columns here, can be set to different values. So you could set it to you know, camera, or you could set it to location. Now here's, here's an area where, where this can be really valuable. So sometimes, um, I will use this to remember where I was when and what I did. So if I say, you know, um, I know I was in South Africa, but I don't remember what year it was. And, oops, not file type date. Um, so I can click on, and I just want to, I want to show you how this filter works. If I click on South Africa, the only values that are going to show up in here are ones that are part of South Africa. You can see that we have um, 9,656 pictures from South Africa, and the date column is now, has now been filtered down to just 9,656. So I can say, oh, I was there in, you know, 2008, 2011, and 2012. And with a single click, go find any of those pictures. So this is, this is really valuable. You, there's other metadata that might be useful to you. Um, one of the things I had to do recently, w I was checking to see whether my fast prime lenses were focusing properly, and so I, I filtered by camera and then by lens. And let's set, this, let's set this back to all and all. And I was looking at the uh, D700 and the 50 millimeter 1.4. And, and when I looked through this, what do we have, 4,700 images? I saw that when I was shooting it wide open, um, it was indeed back focusing. And I used the uh, camera's uh, focus adjust to, to fix that. So this metadata can be used in a lot of different ways. And, and you don't have to do anything for this to be there. The camera records this when you shoot the picture. So if you're spending a lot of time building folders for each camera, you don't need to do it. OK, tags, very useful. Um, let's move into keywords, which are probably the tags people know the best. And let's talk about uh, a few things here. So keywords are the place for you to put information about your pictures in a free form way and to build a hierarchy. Um, not everybody knows that, that you can put these together in a hierarchy and that you can actually rework that hierarchy. And so you can, you can organize this kind of grouping in whatever way is useful for the pictures that you shoot, the subject matter you shoot, and how you want to actually organize the stuff. So when I first started making keywords for events, I just had event names. Well, then I had so many keywords, I needed to make a new top-level keyword called events, and I just put all the events in there. And then that got so crowded, I needed to make other, um, 
you know, needed to build this hierarchy. And, and building it out is, is really easy. You know, I can, I'm right clicking on this. I'm going to say make a new keyword tag inside events. And I'm going to call this, um, well, you know, friends. And so I'm putting it inside events. And then I can drop Darren in there. So I can make this organize, I can build this organization out as I get so many keywords that they're hard to keep control of. And in truth, I have thousands of keywords in here actually. actually. Um, so, you know, we have images from concerts here, but then we have from specific shows, and here's a band I photograph a bunch of times, and so here's different shows I photographed for that band. Or different acts that I saw, or different times I was at Jazz Fest. Um, and essentially making these keywords is really easy. If, um, if I want to make one and call it Sam, and I'll put it in there. should show up in that list. Oh, didn't go in the place I wanted it to, so I'll drag it into the place it belongs. And putting images inside there is as simple as selecting them and grabbing them and dropping them in. And now I can find those at any point by just clicking that. I can find any of these pictures by just clicking next to it. And let me show you how I use this to wrangle the, the assignments that I do. I have one top level keyword called jobs. And when I do assignments for people, I make a keyword for the, for the client. And then as I do more assignments, like for PBS, I did this whole campaign. And each of these was a different assignment inside this campaign. And, and so I just keep building that hierarchy as it's necessary and useful. Let me talk about ratings, because that's really important. Um, so. What ratings enable you to do is if you think of your collection like a period, a pyramid, ratings let you chop off just the top or move that, that line that you're chopping off down to make a very large collection very easy to search. You can see I have 109 images that I've tagged as five star images, 1,000 that have four stars. 7,000 with three stars, 5,800 with two stars, et cetera. Um, so what do these stars mean? Um, I have a definition in my own head that I use when I go through my pictures. And it's, it's a pretty strict definition. And it helps me assign these ratings very easily. So for me. Uh, an X, the reject tag, means throw this picture away. If you hit the X key when you have an image selected, it will put the reject tag on it and then it grays the picture out. Okay, that's Command Z to undo. Uh, one star to me means keep the picture. Two stars means show it to the client. Three stars means recommend it to the client. So two and three are really um, about stuff that's going to be shown, either I'm going to show it or I'm going to say this is one I think you should choose. And then four stars means it's best of collection, means I need to float it up above just those pictures for that shoot. And five stars means it's you know portfolio quality image. And I don't agonize about the stars. If I'm on the fence, I give it an extra boost so that it floats up to the top. I want the good ones to float up to the top. And and then you can build these smart collections here in Lightroom that say, show me all images where rating is greater than or equal to five stars. Or I built this set of smart collection or the smart collection called four stars. Rating is greater than or equal to four stars. And I think I have those all available for download here at the Organizing Your Photos with Lightroom 5 resources page you can download that smart collection and install it in your own copy of Lightroom for free. Just, just because you're, just because I like you. I'm sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> yes, there is. I'll give you that. Um, we'll, yeah, I'll have to wait to the end. Um, you can buy it here. I don't know what they're selling it for, but um, but we sell it direct, obviously. So I'll I'll uh, I'll get you that in just a second. All right, um, smart collections. So smart collections are filters. They're not really the place you do the creation, but it's it's very helpful, you know. And if you have, you know, if you shoot videos, it can be nice to have a smart collection for video files. There's the generations of National Geographic <laughs> photo editors. Um, okay. But what we're really talking about now is creating. So this is the place that Lightroom expects you to put your pictures together for some purpose. Like, I want to manage the photos from this shoot so I can output them. Or I want to bring these pictures together to make a book. Or I want to bring these pictures together to um, make a portfolio. So how do we know this is the place like, they want you to do this work? Well, one way you can tell is that in each of the different modules in Lightroom, the only organizational tool that you see is collections. So this is where they want you to do your highest level work. So if you go through and, and you know, look in slideshow, there's collections. And as a matter of fact, there are creation specific collections for each of the creation modules, book, slideshow, print, and web. Very specific um, uh, collections that, that hold their settings. And uh, so, th so this is where you're supposed to do that work. And uh, you have the ability to do the same kind of you know, hierarchy here, where you can put your images together, you can, you can uh, put an organization together that makes sense to you. And so these kind of look like folders, but they're not, so we're not going to call them folders. Um, we're going to call these things collection sets. So collection holds pictures. A smart collection is a saved filter, and a collection set is the shoebox that holds collections. These hold pictures, these hold collections. And this is really where you're supposed to do the work to put your stuff together. And so when I do an assignment, one of the things I'll do, and, and we'll just we'll look through this, we'll see this in action in just a minute, um, is create a, uh, a collection. I'll put every image from the shoot in there, then everything that I've tagged as being good enough to prove to the client goes in there, and then everything that the client selected goes in its own particular collection. And this lets me go back to, in this case, here's a collection from uh, September 2011 and see exactly what the client selected. Because I've used these collection sets in an orderly manner, I can go back and reconstruct my work without having to go search through, oh, what, what ones did they say? Let me, let me go through my email. Um, I, can, I can find that information right here by keeping it in collections. And you can see that you can make this as deep as you need it to be. And, and as with keywords, you can move this around. You know, if I wanted to say, okay, this, uh, you know, this job is no longer, it's in, it's in the jobs in progress because this is my demo catalog, but if I wanted to call it you know, a completed job, I could just move it up there, and now it's living in completed jobs. So I'm doing all this. This kind of looks like a folder structure, but it's not. Ever clear to everybody? These look like folders, but they're not. Yes? Okay, so great question, and let me, let me show you that in real life here. Um, and the question was, if you were going to go travel, would you make different collections? So the first thing I would do is that for the location tags, I would use location tags. <laughs> you know, so for every city, I'd put the city, I'd say Barcelona, you know, rather than, if you use the metadata for what, for the use it's intended, it, it tells you about itself. You know, like if you put the city name in the city tag, you know that's the city. So you know that, you know, intercourse is intercourse Pennsylvania rather than the keyword intercourse, which would be a different thing. Or, you know, <laughs> New York is New York City or New York State. Um, so, so that's the first thing on an or from a s sort of general organizational thing, I would do that. But then as I put the images together, as I was 
trying to make something out of it to create on top of it, then it depends on how you think. And so let me show you a, you know, a big project I did, which was this, um, and I'm still doing, is this Hope in South Africa project. And it's you know, years of shooting and uh, you know, thousands of images. And, and I did make collections from the different areas so that I could you know, get to those images quickly. Well, so what I did was I, I made a collection set called, called Hope in South Africa. And then I put the images in there. And as I start recombining them and turning them, let me, let me uh, show you here that what I did in projects, this is where the real action happened. So I've had to do all these different projects for the nonprofit over the years. I've needed to make um, uh, images to, uh, that we hung as an exhibit. And this was the Monocacy Crossing thing. And so, so I actually put the images in the order that I thought made sense for us to hang as an exhibit. And, um, and then when I've needed to do uh, slideshows, for instance, I've done different slideshows and done that here inside of the collections area. So, so I had one slideshow um, I think I did photo week first, and then I needed to do another slideshow for a different use and for, for, uh, for them to show to the Rotary Club, and I made a, a different slideshow, but I started using this as the basis, and then I made another one. And, and so this is the place you put it all together, and it, let, me, let me just illustrate this real quickly. Um, one of the things that's very important when you're putting pictures together for a usage is sequencing. So if I've put these images together and I've put them in a sequence and I say, okay, I think that's pretty good, but I want to experiment with another one. So what I'm going to do here is create a new collection and call it, you know, slideshow alt. And so I can create that. Actually, I'll, I'll do something a little bit different here. Let's delete that first. I'm going to go I'm going to grab those images and I'm going to select all. And now when I make a new slideshow, create a collection, everybody following me? I've selected all the images in sequence. Now I'm going to say slideshow, alt. And I'm going to include the selected photos. And what it's going to do is actually going to drop them in this collection in exactly the same order that they were in here. But now I can start messing around with the order of the images. And if I believe you know, that one belongs at the beginning, I can move it. Or you know, maybe that one belongs at the beginning. And now I have two different versions of the same thing. And I can say, all right, let me, you know, let's want to look through these pictures and see if I really like that sequencing. Or do I like this one better? Maybe I'll show them to you know, two different people and see what they say. So this kind of messy creative process, or I might say, oh, you know what, these pictures don't even belong at all. So tap G to get back to grid, right click on it and say remove from collection. So I'm going to remove these five selected images. So this still has all 44 in the original sequence. This one now is down to just 39 and in the new sequence. So, so this ability to start to recombine and put them into useful groupings. And then if I wanted to make a book, I could, you know, and I wanted to take the editing I've done here and move it into a new book, I can make, it, make a book. Let me show you one other thing about this, which, is, which I think is really cool, that um, also illustrates what Adobe wants you to do here, is that you can associate a custom uh, opening and closing um, title sequence with these, and it's sticky to the slideshow collection that I've created. So this one ends um, with a, let's see if I can see that. Okay, so this one ends with um, a specific custom identity plate that says, impossible to read, 
Um, thanks to Rotary International for your generous support. So when I made the creation, the slideshow, I sequenced it, I chose the images, I put it together, I, you know, I chose what the background looked like and whether there needs to be text and what the opening title slide is and what the closing title slide is, and all of that's contained as a creation within the Lightroom catalog. And I can make multiple ones and put multiple opening and closing credits on each one. So that I can show the import process, I want to just run through it right now real quickly, and we get to see a little bit of everything in action. Okay. I have my stunt double images, and I'll put those in, and I'll launch the import photos and videos. This is where I tell Lightroom to copy them over to the hard drive in the proper place, and um, and do a few other things. So I'm going to build previews and I'm going to do my standard rename. That's all automatic. I would never normally not touch that at all. Um, let's, uh, let's see what it looks like to add the metadata. So if I was going to start, I would say um, let's, let's make a metadata template. You don't have to make a metadata template. But I'll start by choosing my basic information, and that fills in everything about me that was in that. So really, at this point, all I'm adding is the location and a couple of keywords. And that's going to make these images really easy for me to find uh, at any point in the future. And I'm going to say that's at Jared's house in Tacoma Park, Maryland, USA. And I'm going to add just a couple of keywords. I go down to the very bottom here, and I'm going to say this is Halloween party and Jared. And let's put commas in there so that they are seen as separate keywords. And I'll hit create. Oh, let's give it a name first. We'll call that BH demo preset. So I'll know to erase it later. This is my real production machine we're, we're working on here. Um, OK, so I'm going to add that metadata on the way in, and I'm going to drop it into a folder that, um, let's just make a new one. And that's going to go inside of November 2013, which just happens to be when I shot the pictures. I just I know that from the fact that these are my demo images for this. So all I've done is I've chosen the preset that has my name on it. I put the location tag in, and I put three keywords on it. And I'm going to say copy it to the correct location and hit import. And so it's going to copy the files over and add them to the catalog, and they're going to come in with all that metadata. And if we go into the keyword list, oh, that's right. I was messing around with this earlier. So those keywords are already in there, and they're actually already deep into. Because it has seen these keywords before, it put them into that, lo it, it, they are in that location. Um, if those were brand new keywords, they would have been sitting at the top level, and I would have had to drop them in the proper place. But basically, you can see I have this image selected, and the check marks mean those uh, keywords have been applied to these images. And if I go, let's you know, look at the entire catalog full of images, all 75,000, and if and I can find these at any point in the future by going to location and go to you know US Maryland Tacoma Park Jared's house and and those images will be available or I guess I did I not put it in there what did I do wrong I did something wrong Let's find the images Let's go into 
PC. Thank you. Got it. That's the uh, the United States is what uh, the iPhone uh, likes to call it. Okay, so that information is in there, easily findable at any given time, and once once you do it properly, and uh, yeah, quick question. Correct, and I'm not going to get in. Not going to have time to do smart previews, but one to ones are nice if you need to edit images for critical focus, because they're, you know, essentially pre-rendered at size, and so you can look through the images really quickly and see if things are in focus. So let me just show you what a normal shoot would look like for me. I brought all the images in, so I have here's the 22 images for this shoot. So I'm going to go into collections and. Um, because I'm doing workflow right now, let's, let's make a collection, and we'll even make it inside Halloween so I'll know where it, where it lives. I'm going to create a collection set for Jared's party. And this is just a, this is a shoebox, a collection set. And then, um, uh, we should have put that inside Halloween. And let's make a collection inside there and just call it all for all images inside Jared's party. Now with 22 images, do I really need to do this? Probably not, but a shoot of 500 images, it's, it's more helpful to have one click to be able to get to all of the pictures from the shoot. So now I've got the pictures in here and I've got to decide how much I like them, which is a thing I like to do almost immediately. Is figure out how much I like the pictures. And I'm going to do that by using ratings. And so let's go all the way back to the beginning. Click on the frame. And so remember, one means uh, keep it, but don't show it. That could be like for pano parts or HDR elements. Two means show it to the client, even if the client's me. Three means recommend it, and four is best of collection. You know, I'll say, okay, that's a nice image. I'm going to give that a three. I'll go on to the next. And all right, I'd show that to them, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd show that as well. Yeah, maybe I'd show that. Um, that one's fuzzy. I don't really like it. You know, maybe I'd hit that as a reject. That's a reject. And we can tab to get rid of the wings there. And a lot of times what I like to do is look through a sequence, go forward and backwards. So the last one is the one that's actually sharp, so that's recommended. That's recommended too. That's not sharp, not sharp, not sharp. Again, another sequence. Which one do I like the best out of the bunch? That's a nice one. I'll recommend that. I'd show it but not recommend it. I'm going to say that's a reject, show it, show it, fuzzy, show it, show it. And actually, I'll say that's a recommended. And then the last sequence, these three images, so that's a reject, that's a reject, and that's the one I'll recommend of that sequence. And I try and do this, you know, for all my shoots. I definitely do it for all my professional shoots. I'm a little backed up in my personal work at this point. But if you do this, you can really make sense of your images really quickly. You know, and I can just click this and say, okay, here's the images that I thought were the best from the shoot. And I can look through those. And those are the ones I'm going to recommend and send off to the client. So at this point, a couple of things. I would typically get rid of my rejects. And I can do that by uh, going, finding the images. Let's, uh, I've got a filter. And this is also downloadable off the website that's um, rejects. And then those can be deleted. Forever. 
forever. Yes. And, and so that's a really, that's, I like that question. Um, so, so the, uh, oh, interesting. It's not liking my new hard drive. Um, uh, oh, yeah. No, permanently delete the files. All right. Um, I believe that the, the decision to delete, it's either a decision to keep or get rid of forever. The worst thing you can do is have a half a decision. Like, oh, I'll delete them from here, but I'll put them in this big mess over here that I will never, ever be able to find and will <laughs> forever keep me from being able to figure out what to do with that stack of hard drives that's sitting over in the corner. Um, you know, you either keep it or you get rid of it. And I have a, I have a predisposition to keeping stuff. You know, we've seen magic of uh, Adobe putting out this new Photoshop that can now take out of focus pictures and make them focused. And stuff that might have, you might have thrown away as this is not usable can, can now be salvaged. So I, I keep a lot of stuff. But, you know, sports, out of focus sports photos of my kids' crew team, like, no, you know, get rid of that, you know, 100 gigs of whatever, uh, crew, crew photos. I don't need to keep those. Um, okay, so I've deleted the bad ones. And in this case, I guess I should have had a couple of these as one stars, but in, in this case, all of these are proofable pictures. And um, anybody here a photo shelter user? No? Okay, one, yeah. Um, photo shelter is a pretty cool service. I've been using it uh, to deliver my jobs and um, to build my portfolio. And let's see if that goes through the firewall. I think it does. Um, so yeah. Um, you can actually publish directly out of Lightroom to Photo Shelter and send the images off to your clients and have maintain a direct connection. You'll see that these images here are actually sitting in my published collection and in here and portfolio collection. So there's, uh, there's the real people portfolio and in the sequence that they got uploaded and used in the portfolio on Photo Shelter. And then there's, there's a couple other things that I have marked as a portfolio. These images that are also sitting over on Photo Shelter. And same, same set of pictures in sequence here. And so you can actually, anybody here use published services in Lightroom at all? Okay, a couple of you guys. Um, it's really, really great, I think, what it, what it offers. You can publish out to, say, a Dropbox folder if you want to just share with people, like people in your family. Or you can publish out, I publish out the photo shelter to, um, uh, for images that I'm going to share with, uh, with clients. And so tap G to get to the grid, select you know, Command A to select all. Normally I would have reworked these a little bit, but time is short. And then um, for images I would send out, I can make a new published collection here. And we're including the selected photos, so they're going to come in in the same sequence that they were in, that they are selected in and create, and we're having a problem with the proxy server. But if we were not, <laughs> with one button, I'd be able to log into Photo Shelter and upload these photos, and then send a password, either make it open or make it private, send the password off to them, and then they can see those images. And if I updated them here, you know, if I went in and said, oh, you know what, that one, actually really needs a little bit of work in highlight recovery. Let's, let's add a little clarity and pull the highlights down, open up the shadows and make it a little creepier. Um, then I would be able to update those, again, with a, with a single button. It would update it out to the copy that's living on Photo Shelter. It was pretty cool, I think, this ability to connect out into the rest of the world. Okay, thank you everybody. I really appreciate you coming.
Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.